Now again, we're on to the bows and we're talking commercialism here. I know I have a tutorial on making the bows. But using your florist ribbon, if you have an upturned stool, presuming you don't have a bar maybe set up for holding your ribbons, is you can sit down at night time with this sitting on the floor and you can get all your bows made. So out of a roller ribbon, and um, the full roller ribbon, you'll get about 20, 25 of these bows. These bows will do for your grave wreaths. I probably wouldn't use them on the door wreaths. I'd probably stick to the luxury ribbons that I will show you in one of the other tutorials. But if you're going to do wreaths for the grave, these, uh, this ribbon is obviously waterproof and if it's left on the grave, it's absolutely fine. But also, if you choose to do um, a cheaper ribbon on your wreaths to bring down the price, there's nothing wrong in using these ones. And if you want to, you can do them in other colours. Like I've often done wreaths and using a silver ribbon or a gold ribbon or a purple ribbon. We even had there a few years ago when Frozen was so popular and we had that frozen blue colour in the ribbons and that we made what we, was, what we would call the frozen wreaths. Now when I demonstrate this bow normally, I say it takes between 4 yards and 4 metres of ribbon. The handiest way when you're working off a roll, hopefully you can see, still see the stool there, is you make your circle eight inches. So you could be sitting on the couch at home, you know, in the sitting room, telly on in the background. And what you do is you make your circle eight inches. And then what you do is you make 12 full circles, only counting one hand. So one circle, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And what I would do then is cut off the ribbon, and I'd rest it on the table. And if it was me, and I was planning on making 20 bows, I would keep doing that, because I always feel when you're working to a system, you work faster, and I'd have the 20 circles then up on the table. Now, some people like to add a tail to the back of the bow. Now, again, for wreaths, for Christmas wreaths and grave wreaths, you don't need your tail to be really, really long. So again, that's up to you to decide. Get your ribbon, fold it in half. Now again, just watch the edge of the ribbon there, that that's either at the top, it's anywhere but the middle, like that would be the wrong place to have it. See where it'll keep falling out. So have it anywhere else. Fold your ribbon over in half. With your scissors, get your scissors and cut out the sharp v, sharpest V as possible. So again, on the programs, I often say, it's like making a pair of knickers for somebody, if I turn it up that way there, to see two high leg cuts and a little G-string in the center. Open it out, and this is where you can add your tail if you want. Add your thick tail to the back, tear off a thin string, and tie this around the centre. And make your double knot. And tie the knot as tight as possible. Now these bows will also do for your hand-tied bouquets. So if you're planning on doing hand-tied bouquets as for Christmas as well, probably delivery the day before Christmas Eve or actually on Christmas Eve, you could have lots of these made as well. You could have all these ribbons curled if that's what you're into. I prefer to keep my ribbons straight. And then when you're opening the bow, now don't open the bow till nearer the time because when the bow is opened, it'll get squashed. Where you can store all these in a box and it'll be perfect. But when it does come to the time, it's twisted to me, twisted to you, twisted to me, twisted to you. And keep pulling the loops every second one. Don't pull it too hard like I did there because it snaps. And then turn it upside down and you'll probably find the opposite side will snap out as well. So inside loop, twisted to me, inside loop, twisted to you, inside loop, twisted to me, inside loop, twisted to you. And so on until they're all pulled out. And then when your wreaths are made, you can use them two little strings there to tie it to the top of your bow. And then these are one of your tails then which can be fancied off afterwards. But I'm going to show you another technique of making the bow, which I find kind of faster or easier. So again, using my stool, I'll make my one circle eight inches, okay? I'm going to make my 12 full circles. So the best thing to do is only count one hand. Now sometimes I often say to the classes, make 12 full circles and one for good luck. But I have the one for good luck made already here. So now I'm going to count just one hand. So there's, oops, it is. One full circle. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And then cut your ribbon. Now again, I'm going to add a little tail piece. So just a cut our tail piece. And again, it's up to you what length you want it. So this time, you fold the ribbon over in half. Crease it on the fold. So, so far, it's exactly the same. Get your scissors, cut out your V's, sharper the better, open it out like a dicky bow, add the tail to the back of the bow. 
Now this is where it's going to be a little bit different. You know normally at this stage I tear off the thin piece and I tie it around the centre. Well what I'm going to do is with one of the long 20 gauge wires, so the same wires that I showed you when I was wiring the pine cone. I'm going to wrap the wire around the centre, so you can see the way I've just cut it there. And I'm just going to fold it over in half. Now it's really important, okay, so hopefully you can see that there. It's really important that the short piece of wire is kept short and the long piece of wire is kept as long as you possibly can. Now with your fingers, squash that in there as tight as you possibly can. Now you could use your scissors, you know that way, but just squeeze it in as tight as you can and as close up to the ribbon. And with the long piece of wire, two twists, one, two, stop. And that's it done. And there's your bow ready and all you have to do then is store that in the box. Personally, I find it easy. I'll open it near the time that I'm still getting the same effect as this bow. But when I go to insert it into the wreath, I find it so much easier and less finicky and not, not needing as many fingers, basically, is that I can stick that down to a wreath, catch the wire up underneath, as I'll show you in the tutorials, and that's the bow attached. Where the other way, I'm trying to get them two strings, I'm trying to tie it around, I'm trying to fish it in underneath the spruce and the holly, and I'm trying to tie a double knot at the back. I find it so much easier to insert the bow using the wire. And I can do exactly the same with the fabric bows as well. And I will show you that where I can tie them with a wire. But this is all just for speed. So there's our bow opened out with our tails fancied off. And there's the wire ready to insert into your, your door wreath or your grave wreath. Now, the reason why I say don't open the wreaths, sorry, open the bows in advance, what happened then is it gets squashed and it gets dusty and you see the way they don't last as long. So keep the bow closed until near the time when you actually need them. But for um, our door wreaths, I much prefer to use the luxury ribbons. Now, I have a fantastic selection here at the school and we bought all these selections from UK Florence Supplies, obviously in the UK. Um, again, there's lots of different um, varieties of them and you can have a look through them and choose which ones you prefer. Now what I would advise you to do is get in and make your sample bow. So work off your roller ribbon, so depending on what fabric you're going to use yourself, right? And make a bow first in your hand but still have it attached onto the roller ribbon. And decide like how big or how small you want to make the bow. So in other words, I want the tail longer there. So now I'm going to give myself a little bit extra. So measure out your bow. There we go, so roughly gather in. So I'm happy with that tail, so I'm gonna get about that amount of tail on the opposite side, and now I'm going to cut it. Now, probably in the kit that we sent out to you, I had the piece measured out already. But what I want you to do yourself is measure, make the bow like I did there, you know, like kind of roughly, measure the length of ribbon, and then give it to the kids or the other half and tell them then to cut them all the same length. There's no point in me saying to you what length I've cut this one because it all depends on the width of the ribbon. Do you know the way that you're using? So you need to make one up yourself. So then what you can do, and do all this in advance because this all saves time, is get both ends of the ribbon and fold them over in half. And do you remember that 45 degree cut, you know, to get that little V up into it? And again, that's going to save you time. And again, you could teach the kids or the other half how to do this. Make sure you have a sharp scissors for cutting your V's. So then also, you can get the bow made in advance. And I know in one of the other tutorials, I show you making the bow tying it with a string, but commercially, it's better to use the wires. So again, we've got a ribbon. We kind of like wrap it around the neck as such. Just get your two tails exactly the same length, the length you want. You're holding the bow in the front and you're holding it at the back of the neck. You bring the back of the neck in level here. And with your two thumbs, a so pink nail varnish on today. So with your two thumbs then, it's squash, gather, pleat, squash. You see all the way across. And it's really important that you do them little gathers rather than just squashing it in together. And using the long 20 gauge wire, I'm going to catch the wire around the center. Again, that long piece of wire and the short piece of wire. So I'm just gonna hold this up just so that you can see it there. See the long piece and the short piece. And as close to the fabric, and don't worry about creasing the fabric, it's fine. As close to the fabric as possible, squash them two pieces of wire in together. And then grab the long one and wrap it around the short one twice. One, two, stop. Don't keep going, there's absolutely no need. And then you can go back, you can chuck down the two tails then, to kind of get them coming down south. You can put your fingers or your hands, depending on the width of your ribbon, in between your loops there to see to puff them out. Now what will happen is when you store them in your box, they're going to get squashed. But when you put it back on the wreath again, you can put your hands in, beside, in between them because there's a little wire edge on the edge of that ribbon and it helps to hold it. 
So again, when I go to insert them bows onto my dories, the wire will go through in two seconds, the wire will bend up underneath, and that's my bow secured on in literally seconds. Where if you tie it with the two strings, it's an easier way of doing it, but when you actually go to tie it onto the reef, you're fumbling and you're boosting, and you're trying not to flatten down the foliage, you know the way, and it's a much slower way. So again, this is all about the commercial tips and tricks and getting yourself organized in advance. So now what you do is go online, order all your ribbons, get your wires and start making all your bows.